We've just been looking at compound interest and we took a look at uh, an investment and just took a look sort of by hand calculating everything here at what would happen and so we figured out how much we'd have left after three years and then we took a look at in general this is sort of how you could say sort of in general then you could sort of say it like this right here this would be your um, this is sort of how it would work in in general you could say this However, I'd like to give you a different formula. I think in, well, a more commonly used one. Although this is, this is technically how you do it if you want to see it as a geometric sequence. But there's a more generic version here. So actually, this is the more commonly seen one. We're going to write it like this. A equals P times 1 plus I, all that to the power of N. This is a much more commonly used one. So I'll say this right here, this is more common. So this right here is the more commonly used one. So this right here, this is for compound interest. This is really the sort of main equation that a lot of people use here. Compound interest. So we need to define everything here. So in this case right here, we're going to have A. That's going to be your initial, um, uh, or no, sorry, not your initial, your final amount. This is how much you have at the end of the day, so to speak. So that's your final amount. P is called your principal. Um, that's your initial amount. That's how much you start with. So sometimes that's called the principal. That's actually why we use the letter P for it. Principal amount. Well, I, now this is going to be important. Now this is your interest rate that you're getting, but this is really, really important. This is your interest rate as a decimal. And we're going to say per compound period. It's going to be the key thing right here. It's this right here. It's going to be per compound period. Um, so this is, this is how often they recalculate. This is really what this means here. This is how, uh, so the compound period, sorry, that's what this is right here. The compound period. Uh, that's going to be how often they, meaning the bank or you or whoever, uh, recalculates what the value is. So for example, it could be yearly, in other words, once a year. It could be monthly, that would be obviously 12 times a year. It could be daily. It could even be continuously. So you can compound all sorts of different ways. So your compounding is sort of really weird. But it's important though, this interest rate divided by your compounding periods here. And then N, that's just going to be, whoops, I need it, I guess, in the same color. I'll put it in black here. N is the, uh, in this case, you hear the number of compound periods. That's the number of compounding periods in total. So this is how you would do this. This is the this is the equation that one uses. Super important. It's seen very very often. Most textbooks and most students learn this equation right here. This is the sort of really big one right here. This one. It's important though that you keep track of what's what, especially the interest rate. So it's as a decimal, and you divide it by the compounding periods, and then n is the number of compound periods. That's the only sort of weird part to it. So let's actually look at an example. So you invest $60,000 for four years at an interest rate of 5% per annum, in other words, per year. How much will you have after four years if the interest rate is compounded yearly? And the next thing we're going to do is if it's monthly, just to sort of practice changing things around. Well, we're going to use this equation here. We need this equation that goes A equals, whoops, A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. So we're going to write that out here, I think. So A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. Well, let's figure out what the different letters are. I need to know what different things are. So this one right here, the 60,000, that is your principal amount. So P equals 60,000. That's never going to change. Now I, I is going to depend here. So in this case right here, I is going to be your interest rate, which is 5%. So that's a decimal, so that's 0 0.05. But, this is the key thing, per compounding period. So how many times am I compounding it, in this case, uh, per year? So that means I'm doing it every one year. 
Um, now what you have to do here is when you say compounding period, we're saying how many times it's done per year. So in this case right here, if it's done per year, it's just done one time per year. So it's going to be 1.05 over 1. That's going to be pretty straightforward. And in this case here, n is going to be number of compounding periods, so 4 times once a year, so it's just going to be 4. In this case then, I can say that a then will be p, which is 60,000 times 1 plus, and this is going to be 0 0.05, all that to the power of n, which is 4. I just need to calculate that with my calculator. Here I go, so I can say 1, well 1 plus 0 0.05 is just 1.05, all that to the power of 4 is this, and then I multiply that by 60,000. Normally we always round things to two decimal places because, uh, at least in the US and Canada, for example, and most other countries, we do things to uh, two decimal places. So that would be cents. So this would be 72930.38. That's what, how we would normally do it mathematically. So we would say the amount you'd have is 72930. I think that's what it was, right? 72930, yeah, 0.38. Now that's how a mathematician would round it, but of course banks would round it down because they don't want to give you as much money. But this would be this is how much you have left. In other words, this is great. You you put in sixty thousand and now you, it's worth seventy two thousand nine hundred thirty and thirty eight cents. That's if you compound it yearly. Now what happens if you compound monthly? Well, we can still look at the same things here. We still have that your principal is still 60,000. Uh, your interest rate this time is 0 0.05. It's still the 5% that we started with. However, this time it's done per compound period. In this case, it's being done monthly, which is 12 times per year. That's why I'm going to say this is 0 0.05 over 12. That is the key thing here to doing this one. And n, that's the total number of compound periods that have been done. In other words, it's recalculated that many times. Well, over four years, if it's done once a month, well, that's 4 times 12. I right? guess 12 times per year, that's what monthly means, uh, times 4 years. So that's, of course, 48. So then I can use my same equation, a equals p times 1 plus i to the power of n, except this time I can say a equals 60,000 times 1 plus, in this case right here, 0 0.05 over 12. All that is going to be to the power of 48. Let's actually calculate that then. In this case then, I'm going to say, let me clear this. So I'm going to say 0 0.05 divided by 12. Say this. This plus 1. I'm just trying to figure out what this interior value is. That raised to the power of 48 is going to be this value. And this times 60,000 is going to be this. So 73, 253.72, let's say. All right, so over here then I'm going to say, so therefore this right here is uh, 73, 253.72. Maybe I should leave a little bit of room for my dollar sign here. So this time I have 73,000. Some people put a little comma there. And then here I had 72,000. So actually it turns out changing the number of times it's compounded per year, if it's done yearly, then it's only once per year. Whereas if it's monthly, it's done 12 times per year then it actually changes the amount that you have. You see here you have 73,000 and here you have 72,900 and so on. And this actually can come in handy in everyday life. I mean a lot of people say, oh when am I going to use this? Well if you're calculating a loan for example, if you're buying a car or a house or something like that, you can totally use your calculator and in fact you can totally use this formula. I can tell you a real life story, this really happened. My wife and I were buying a summer house, because in Denmark people like to buy those. So it's like a cottage. So it's up north of Copenhagen, and it's uh, great. When we were going though for the loan, for the finances, we actually went to the bank, and of course they tell us what the rate would be. And I actually brought my calculator, and I was actually figuring it all out as I went along to make sure that we weren't getting ripped off. And of course we weren't, we were fine. 
Um, but in this case, there's actually a really neat app that you can use here. There's a little application that you can use on your TI-84 at least. It's called Finance. And it's actually called TVM Solver. This one I really like. You can actually do all this stuff right here. So N, again, that's the number of compounding periods in total. So let's say I wanted to calculate maybe the more complicated one, this one here. Let's say I wanted to do that one with my calculator. If I was done monthly, I wanted to know after four years, I can actually do four times 12, that's N. So I just do four times 12 plus enter and it already can calculate things, great. Interest rate, you just have to here, just say it as a percent and that's it. PV means present value. So in this case, I'm initially investing 60,000. I'm making no payments, because you can actually look at this and see how many payments do you have to make to work off your loan. So in this case, if you're making payments, adding things or something like that, you can put those in. In this case, I'm not doing any of those. And I'm going to want to know my future value. Now the key thing here is going to be my uh, payments per year. Well, I suppose here I don't really have any payments per year. I mean, that's not really very important in this case. Um, but normally what you do is you make your payments per year the same thing as your compounding periods per year. So I'll just make it 12, even though it won't matter in this case. But your compounding period per year, because we're doing it monthly, is done 12 times per year. Then what you do, as long as you fill in everything except for one thing, then you, it'll solve for everything except for one. In other words, let's say I fill in all the information except for one of these variables I want to solve for. In this case, I want to solve for future value, how much it'll be worth. So here, do you see the little green solve? So it's color coded, so I press alpha, enter basically, and that gets me my solve. And it tells me that I'm going to have 73,253.7213. Isn't that awesome? And we could have done it the same way with the other one, except here when we had it all once per year, uh, that was for this part right here. Then we could actually say, all right, well this right here was done once per year, and that means this one here is also once per year. And what we would do in this case right here, we would have that n was equal to, we were only doing it once per year, so n would be just four times one, which is just four. And then we would go down and we would attempt to solve for future value. So we go solve, and it would give us a new future value. And lo and behold, we get the same thing. Now, like I said, this is very, very useful because you can actually do something a little bit different. You could say, what if um, everything here is compounded, let's say, monthly? I'm just trying to show you how you can use this TVM solver for really cool things. And let's just say, I don't know, let's say you borrow a million dollars. Let's say you do that. So a million dollars. I need six zeros. Let's see, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So I borrow a million dollars, and let's say the bank gives me a rate, yeah, let's say of 5%, um, let's say I'm paying. Now if I'm compounding this right here, let's say after 30 years, a lot of people take out a 30-year loan for their house or something. So let's say you take out a million dollars, you take 30 years to pay it off, but if it's done compounded once a month, in other words, 12 times per year, then you have to go 30 times 12. Let's just say, so we've got a situation now, we're at 5%, we're borrowing a million dollars, and we want, this time, we want the future value to be zero. In other words, we want to pay this off. So the question could be then, how much do I have to pay each month? This could be this thing. So if you wanted to pay off a million dollar loan and compound it once a month, well then, and it takes 30 years, well 30 times 12 is 360, then I solve for payments here. So I could say, well, as long as I paid 5,368 every month. That's what the bank would need me to pay in order to pay off this right here. One thing you could do then is take a look at, look at this number, 5,368, and you'd multiply that by 360. So let's say we do that. So 5,368. Let's say I multiply that, because that's how much I'm paying per month. I did this for 360 months, in that case, or that's 30 years. I would end up paying $1.9 million for a $1 million loan. So do you see why the banks love this? Because you see, in the end, you end up paying almost double what you actually borrowed. See, this this actually, this ends up in, the, in total. It costs you $1.9 million overall in order to borrow $1 million from the bank if they just charge you 5% interest. Because a lot of people think, oh, in the end, I'm just going to pay a million dollars. I'm just going to pay 5% more. No. They're having you pay 5% on the amount that's owing every month they're doing this. 
So you see how you need to be very, very careful with loans and make sure you take a look at what your payments will really be. This is very, very important. So I think this little app here, this little TVM solver is really, really useful. But to go back to what we just learned about then, so we learned that we can actually use this equation here in order to solve compound interest things by hand, as long as you did it per compounding periods. And in fact, if we want to be really, really careful, we should say number of compounding periods per year. This is really what we should do. This is, you know, this is how many per year. So in this case right here, if we did it once per year, then it was just over one. And over here, if it was done monthly, then it was, you know, 12. Because we did it 12 times per year.